Getting into our top story tonight, we are working to sort out some confusion regarding the city of Buffalo's school speed zone camera program. It's been a bumpy ride from the very start and now crews are moving into a new phase of changing over every school speed limit sign across the city, going from 15 miles per hour to 20 miles per hour. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Channel 2's Jeff Preval joins us live right now. And Jeff, we know that the council voted to take down the cameras, but the speed limit change was also part of that. Obviously, it's a process. What is the latest with all this? Because a lot of people are wondering. Yeah, absolutely. And there are a lot of chapters to this story. It feels like we're on page 250 on a very large book. Now, uh, we're finally getting some clarity on the signs that are being changed over this afternoon. I spoke by phone to the commissioner of the Department of Public Works. Commissioner Michael Finn tells me that city DPW crews, they started last week changing over the speed limit signs, but the city didn't put out any information ahead of time. We just happened to notice that the speed limit change on uh, Bailey Avenue was being changed over. DPW will go throughout the city from now until the start of school, changing those signs over. Many city lawmakers, however, they want to see those cameras come down as well. This council repealed it. Our, our desire is for those cameras to come down. Every day that those cameras are up is a reminder of a bad policy that the city has. They should come down. school speed zone cameras unless a school principal or a majority of council members wanted a camera on. That's why the cameras, they haven't come down because technically they can still be used. Buffalo's parking commissioner tells me at this point, the only cameras that are on are on a Bailey near a daycare. All others have been turned off. Actually, the Wi-Fi in those cameras have been turned off as well. City officials say that they um, that the cameras, they don't actually have to come down until September 1st, Kate. Yeah, so what about the cost here? How much is it costing the city slash taxpayers to change over the speed limit signs now? Yeah, that's a question that we had for the city. Very little, in fact, according to the city's DPW commissioner. It's not a, really a new sign, but new stickers that are going up. And the commissioner tells me that there's very little cost in terms of materials. But it is time consuming, of course, to do all this and city workers, they're doing the work, of course, two months before the start of the school year. All this is happening as city lawmakers work with the city to get speed humps and speed readers where cameras are. Lawmakers feel that this is the better way to get people to slow down without issuing citations. And no one has a specific date. I know they continue to work on it, um, but as my colleague, Majority Leader, um, Rivera stated we really want to move this along as quickly as possible, especially as um, this new school year is approaching rather quickly. But we are still unsure exactly how much it will cost to get speed readers and speed humps installed. That's something that council members say that they're working on with the city. Back to you. Yeah, a lot of moving parts to this and, and something that we get questions on. So thanks for getting those answers. Jeff Preval reporting live for us. Jeff, thanks. Yep. So it continues. So now to something that's affecting everyone watching right now. The higher prices we're all paying because of inflation. The monthly report on consumer prices came out today with the consumer price index rising almost five and a half percent compared to a year ago. That was higher than analysts expected and the headline can be a bit shocking, but it doesn't seem to be having a huge impact on the stock market. For instance, you would expect that with a number so high. So let's talk about that right now. Get some perspective with Greg McBride, chief financial analyst with bankrate.com. He joins us live right now. Greg, it is great to have you back on the show. Thanks. Great to be with you. Thanks so much for having me. Greg, it's nice to see you, and this is the biggest jump in the overall index in 13 years, and it's being driven by a few industries in particular. As we take a look here, we're showing our viewers the change in price from a year ago. Car rentals are up almost 90%. Used cars and trucks up 45%. Also big increases in the cost of gas and other sectors related to transportation. So with all of this in mind, why doesn't the top line inflation number seem to be seriously and negatively impacting the rest of the economy right now? Well, there's still this widespread belief that this spike in inflation that we're seeing is going to be short lived, that it's going to be temporary. And, you know, true, when you look at some of those components that you were just talking about, you know, used cars, it's not like they've just become a great investment overnight, right? I mean, these outsized increases month after month, that has a short lifespan to it. It's not going to continue forever. I think the more troubling concern is that inflation seems to be accelerating. 
it, as Michael said, increased faster than was expected. And it's also been increasing faster each month. We're also seeing more widespread increases across other categories. That's the part that concerns me a bit. We talked to you just a little more than a month ago when another of these reports came out. Um, and when we talked to you then, you know, the COVID pandemic and supply chain shortages were big reasons for some of these inflation issues. Are those still the main drivers right now or is there something else at play here? Uh, those are still very relevant. You've got the pent up demand and those supply chain constraints that is driving up prices for a lot of different things. And that's not going to go away overnight. That's probably going to be with us through the balance of the year, probably be early next year before that really washes through. That's where a lot of this argument comes from that, oh, it's going to be temporary. And that's why you're going to have this tug of war between is it temporary or is this something more permanent? That's going to continue for months to come. And kind of looking forward, what do you expect comes next here? And is there a way that the average person can kind of plan for it? Yeah, it's the widespread nature of these, I think, that is a little bit concerning because some of these are costs that go up, but they never come back down, right? We're talking about things like auto insurance, uh, you know, even things like tires, auto accessories. Uh, some of these components of transportation services, they go one way, they go up, but they never seem to come back down. And we haven't even started to see the impact of higher home prices or rents reflected in the consumer price index. And as we all know, those are costs that go up one way, right? They rent never comes down. It always seems to just go up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you mentioned car insurance there. That was on the list that we showed our viewers in the top 10, um, increasing double digits over a year ago. And you wonder what in the world having to do with the pandemic is causing my car insurance to be more. I thought it would be less since people drove less. But anyway, we'll leave it there. Greg McBride, it is really great to always get your perspective on this. Chief Financial Analyst with Bankrate.com and a friend of the show. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.